I'm here, Slugum23. You're joining me for Nightbound Chapter 14. Still reeling from the devastating attack on Lamrian that cost Lord Elric his life, you've just discovered Thomas's whereabouts using Ivy's scrying spell. What are we still doing here? We have to go. Thomas is at the warehouse right now, but who knows how long he'll be there. I'm with Rook. Gotta strike while the iron's hot. His face, uncharacteristically sober. Garrus slides out from behind the bar and comes to your side. I'd like to accompany you as well, if you'll have me. I don't often bend my gifts to violence, but that vile man stole our Ducrimus. The Fae should take part in bringing him down, and my kin at Lamrian will have enough on their hands tonight. I'm in too. You'll need someone to watch your back. Garrus, if that's okay. Exceedingly okay. I can't think of anyone I'd rather have watching my back. Garrus Crom, thank you. I guess that leaves me holding down the fort. I'm more of a behind-the-scenes girl. While admittingly badass glowing eyes and all this high-octane brain power are all that handy in the field. We'd never have found him without your spell, Ivy. You've guided us at every turn. I call that pretty hands-on. Oh, thanks, Vixen. I feel all warm and fuzzy in the place where my heart used to be. Laga hops up at the bar, mewing insistently. <laughs> no, Kitty. You have to stay here with Auntie Ivy where it's safe. Little creature looks at Ivy, then back at you. <laughs> wow, no need to sound so excited. Time to put that crazy a lot down. You ready, Vixen? I'm ready to fight. Terrified. Mm. Ready to fight. I know he's dangerous, and who knows what he's got in store in that warehouse, but I'm ready to take that bastard down. Catherine tosses you a wicked grin, her dark eyes sparking with anticipation. Nothing quite like the thrill of impending battle. Are you prepared to go, Garrus? Gives you an assessing look. Not that I think you aren't quite lethal on your own, but perhaps you'd like to equip yourself with something bludgeony or pointy. Maybe a new outfit, perhaps. I'm sure our dashing night hunter has a spare axe or two hanging upstairs. That's it, Nick, and he shrugs. <sighs> Not a bad idea, honestly, if you, uh, if you think you can handle it. I know I'd feel a lot better if you had a way to defend yourself, Vixen. Well, bring one of Nick's axes. You'll be unstoppable in the fight ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and pass. I'll be fine without it. No training, just here's this giant axe and wield it. Okay. If you're sure, it's apt to get pretty hairy in there. I can handle it. Take a bite of Ivy and then strap up and head to the warehouse. A short walk later, you gaze up at the moonlight, spilling over the nondescript exterior, your body buzzing with a lot like a live wire. I can't believe he's really there. You'd think Evil HQ would be in a rundown castle or something, lightning rending the sky. Right? I mean, banality of evil aside, this looks like a run-of-the-mill warehouse. It's almost too in innocuous. I'm not picking up on any prediction warns. Not out of here, maybe, but I bet he's got a good inside a booby trap ten ways from Sunday. Rom has a wickedly barbed club from hand to hand, apprehension stealing across his face. I'm sure it's not as dark in there as it is out here. My eyesight's not what it used to be. Not to worry, they have excellent night vision. Your heart thunders in your chest as you look at your friends' tense, trepidatious faces. What if all this is the last time we're alive? Oh, We're gonna spend time with someone! You can't spend time with yourself, though? Oh, I guess because it's not a diamond choice. Let's over at Vera, starting a little... Starting a little? When you find her watching you with huge glistening eyes, you move closer to her, gently squeeze her gloved hand. 
Hey there, you doing okay? A little freaked out, honestly. Feels like the gloves have come off one too many times the past few days. And the worst part is, I'm not actually scared. I'm, I'm almost looking forward to it. And that's the part that really freaks me out. You think of Thomas' scarred face, twisting with blind hatred, and the incandescent rage blazing into you to get into your into being inside you. These, I swear half these things don't make sense. You're getting ready to fight for your friends, Vera. For every supernatural being in this whole town. And it's... If that's not a righteous cause, hell, I don't know what is. She holds your gaze for another long moment, her eyes sifting, shifting between yours, then sets her jaw. You're right, Vixen. I guess I've gotten so used to suppressing the curse that that the shames become ingrained. But all I have to do is remember that he wants to eradicate us, all of us. The bad, the beautiful, and the in-between. And I refuse to stand by and let him lay waste to my town. You hear your unmistakable undercurrent of Lady Smoke and Vera's forceful tone, but a bold, noble version that only lends you strength. Shoulder to shoulder, you turn to the warehouse doors. It's time to go, gang. He steps back, then delivers a massive kick to the double doors, slamming them open. He darts inside, and you duck in after him. <laughs> okay. Like, look at the faces. I'm not gonna lie. Before we begin this, look at these. Okay, it's kind of wicked. As your eyes adjust to the pale, fluorescent light, you make out the silhouettes of sprawling, whimsical shapes in every corner. You see dusty, derelict floats in the shape of a leviathan, a carriage made of flowers, a clamshell drawn by owl seesaw horses. I hit my goddamn head. Don't ask. This place is so... I want to say sad. I remember all these. God, there must it be years of bygone floats in here. It's so forlorn, like a graveyard where floats go to die. It certainly smells like death in here. Just then, you hear a scuffing sound echo from above. Your gaze flies up to the catwalk where Thomas stands, glowering down at you. So, a few vermin managed to escape the cleansing fire. You the ones who send my pet into another, some kind of hell dimension. That was my father, right after your monster sucked the life out of him. A wide, sadistic smile spreads across Thomas' scarred face. Uh, well then, it's my pleasure to tell you that his sacrifice was entirely in vain. He pulls the iron talisman from his pocket and holds it up, displaying the horribly familiar crimson glow. Oh hell, the talisman is primed. Primed? Does that mean... It means my creature is back. And all. But before he can finish, Nick draws his crossbow and fires a bolt into Thomas' shoulder. Ah! You talk too much. The disc goes spinning out of Thomas's grip, clattering across the catwalk. The talisman, this is our chance to grab it. Like hell. Thomas stumbles over the railing, scarlet blood seeping through his shirt, face warped with pain and fury. He clutches at the bone amulet around his neck. What is he saying? Sounds like Sumerian. Akkadian, maybe? Some kind of summoning, but I don't... Thomas howls the incantation on the warehouse floor suddenly bucks beneath your feet. What the... The floats shudder and then fly apart one by one as a torrent of mass skeletons comes bursting out of them. I'm not gonna lie, it's kinda cool. <laughs> Holy, what are they? A parting present from Cass, most likely. Who knows how many nasty little toys she made him over the years. Next to you, Catherine whips out her sigh. Cal shifts to his wolf form, gritting her teeth. Vera takes off her gloves. From 
Krom steps protectively in front of Garrus, gripping his club as Garrus stands, almost casually, one hand resting on the hilt of an ornate knife on his belt. Well, whatever they are, they aren't long for this world. Elton stutter toward you in a grotesque, jerky skitter, their masked faces glittering in the dim light. <sighs> One of them shakes a clattering arm toward you, icy, fleshless fingers wrapping around your wrist, because, you know, you didn't dodge her. Claw at its eyes, why not? Searing, full fury welling up in your throat, you hook your fingers into claws and jam them into the skeleton sockets. <laughs> With your other hand, you grab the skeleton's unhinged jaw and wrench it for head furiously to one side. The skeleton's neck twists with a sickening crunch and then it snaps back into place. <laughs> I think I just pissed it off even more. It grips you by the throat, forcing you to the ground. As everyone else apparently watches, your vision begins to narrow, darkening at the edges. <sighs> it's polished, impassive face leaves above you. You thrash helplessly under its weight. Just your lungs catch fire, but it only bears down more. Uh, uh. Your eyelids flutter and your consciousness begins to slide away and then a snarling blur flies above you. I was wondering when, you know, one of our, like, eight friends would save us. With one massive paw, Cal swipes at the skeleton's skull and dislodges it from its spinal column. As the skull rolls away, the rest of the bones clatter harmlessly to the floor around you. You struggle up to your feet, trembling. Thanks, Cal, that was way too close. Stand shakily, the battle raging around you across the room. Nick fires two glowing bolts in quick succession, each one nailing a skeleton in the eye socket. Bullseye. No time to get cocky, Ryder. Nick grins as he reloads, setting another glowing bolt streaking across the warehouse. Come on, Katie, there's always time. As Catherine cuts a swath through the skeletons, Vera stalks the warehouse floor like an avenging angel, black veins fissuring from over her hands. Ugh. She presses a hand to one of the skeleton's skull, lunging sideways to grab the shoulder of another. They both char at her touch, fracturing into blackened dust. Cal leaps through the cloud of oily dust, teeth bared, and wraps his jaw around a skeleton's throat, ripping out its spine. Behind him, Krom cracks skull after skull with his cudgel, splintering them into shards, guarding his back. Gare slashes at skeletons with a dagger made of light. Won't you come a little closer, Jolly Rancher? Jo Jolly Rancher? <laughs> okay, let's try this again, because that's funny as hell. Jolly Rancher. Jolly Roger, I've got no treasure for you, but I have something sparkly and very, very sharp. Skeleton jitters closer, hissing through its mask. Garrus ducks as it swipes at him, narrowly missing its jagged claw-like nails. Garrus, be careful. You almost... Molly, darling, these bone marionettes are dreadfully slow and clumsy, and the mask's appallingly low rent. Yeltal lunges again, lamenting a hollow, rasping rattle. Air starts between its reaching arms and plunges the blade under its chin. The skeleton's gaping maw feels pulsing light with pulsing light, and then its bone melts with a tallow around like the glowing blade. Oh dear. And this was a new shirt too. I'll send the bill to you. Another skeleton suddenly surges up behind Garrus, its spotted claws scything down towards the face back. Oh. Garrus! Turn towards Garrus, but you're too far away and the skeleton is too fast. Ah! The skeleton's claws rake across his back, tearing through his vest and into the flesh beneath. No! Rom glows in the distance between him and Garrus in three booming strides. Shattering the skeleton skull with a single punch. Garrus, are you right? Speak to me! Yes, dandy. I think bits of rest and a cocktail are unfinished. Damn it. If only I'd brought a weapon. Oh, shut up! As your gaze flies between your friends locked in combat, you see Catherine Vera cornered by a skeletal horde. 
Um, Vera? Question mark. You search forward and wrap your arms around one of the skeletons. Vera, now. As the skeleton thrashes, she lunges forward and presses her hand to its sternum. Black tendrils snake out from her touch, and the bones start to crumble. Skeleton dissolves, leaving behind a cloud of foul, greasy ash. Vera rests her hands on her thighs, breathing hard. Vixen, thank you. Too many of them. Hands starting to hurt. You dust yourself off, then grip her shoulders, squeezing hard. Her wide, harried eyes fly up to meet yours. You've got this, Vera. I know you can do it. She bites her lips and nods, her face hardening with resolve. As she turns and plunges back into the fray, you spot Nick over her shoulder, carving a path towards the catwalk stairs. Nick! Thomas is on the move over up there. Gotta get to him before he grabs that disc and sends us all to hell. Dodging and weaving around shambling skeletons, you sprint after Nick, pounding up the stairs. High above the warehouse floor, you find Thomas dragging himself across the catwalk, leaving a trail of blood glistening in his wake. The disc glows, a lurid scarlet a few feet away, perched at the edge of the service elevator shaft. Not a foot further, you murdering son of a... Unless you want another bolt between your shoulder blades. Thomas slumps, and then he heaved himself around to face Nick, eyes blazing with hatred. What's a night hunter like you even doing mixed up in all this? You should be on the side of the righteous, the human side. You're supposed to be exterminating the blight, not protecting it. Thomas, you're the blight. You grit your teeth, rage beating, a pounding drum beat in your chest. You're the one butchering innocence, you bastard. The only blight here is you. Thomas barks a harsh, humorous laugh, blood speckling in his mouth. Look at that. The likes of you calling me names. Would almost be funny if it wasn't so ridiculous. You and your... Are, yours are virus. A corruption preying upon this world, and I won't rest until I burn you out. You talk about creatures like they're all the same, but that's not true. Some are evil, yeah, but some humans are evil too. You can't tar all of us with the same brush. Thomas lifts his head heavily, his breathing raspy and labored. Tarring. First reasonable thing you said, freak. That's what you all deserve. A crown of hot tar. Feathers poured over your foul heads. Child killers, a lot of you. Murderers. What? You squint at him confused and see a shimmering tear glisten into being beside his temple. Ah, oh, Thomas's tear. Touch the monster tear to see Thomas as he used to be and discover the loss that warped his soul. Okay. As your fingers brush the cool, slick surface of the tear, the warehouse fades from your awareness. And you find yourself behind the wheel of a minivan. Sunlight slants across your face as a child's voice sings sweetly behind you. Baby shark, do 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 do. Oh, me! The woman in the passenger seat chuckles with a fond exasperation, covering your hand on the gear shift with hers. What do you think, Tommy? Do we join in Angie's eight, eight? Oh my God, eighty seventh rendition of Baby Shark or Cry Uncle? I'm gonna go ahead and cry, Uncle. I think we suggest a game. At your daughter's big gray eyes, the mirror in your heart aches with love. Hey, little uh, bite. Maybe it's time for a little sanity break. A what break? How about we play a game instead, huh? I spy. Ooh, I always win this one. I spy something, something pink. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Is it your dolly? No! Ah, uh, your strawberry yogurt, currently decorating the backseat. Angie cheerfully covers the small stain with her hand. It's the back of your head, Daddy. The shiny bit with no hair. Ah, uh, you spy Daddy's... A scent bald spot. Gotcha. Fantastic. <laughs> Justine shakes her head laughing and gives her hand a warm squeeze. I love you, Tommy. You know that, right? 
You better. I wouldn't be much without you and Tiny Diva back there. And? And I love you too. Both of you. More than homemade jalapeno poppers during halftime show. I don't know, that's, that's pretty dedication right there. <laughs> well, I'm honored, Tommy. Well, uh, and more than life itself, obviously. That goes without saying. I'm so glad we had a chance to finally get away together. And New Orleans, no less. I've been dying to go for years. What do you think we should do first? Ah, we should, uh, go on a haunted tour. I was thinking we'd wait until Tiny Diva's down for the count and go on a haunted city tour. You know, how she loves being carried around while she's napping. And, uh, I know how you all love all the supernatural nonsense. Nonsense? Oh, when we get home, I have some very serious scholarly articles for you to read. The merge into the... Now, Minister Bridge, Justine suddenly frowns, staring at something out the window. Tommy, do you see that? Looks like... Like, so, like a heat mirage, but dark. Like something's casting a shadow there. Keeping both hands firmly on the wheel, you follow her gaze towards a blot of swirling shadow on the side of the road. The heck is that? Welcome to New Orleans. Voodoo! As you drive by, the shadow surges forward like something alive, and you spot two glowing scarlet eyes above a mouth ringed with deadly fangs. Oh. Oh, we've never seen a shadow like that. Oh my god! Your car shudders, then grinds to a halt, the sound of rending metal screaming around you. Tommy, it's getting inside! Shadow creature rains through the car like a scalpel through gauze. Reaches in, shrieking like a maelstrom. Oh! And tears through Justine's torso, splattering the inside of the car with hot crimson spray of blood. Well, rest in peace, Justine. Justine! Oh my god! Justine's mouth forms silent words, blood gurgling in her throat, and her head falls to the side, her features slackening. The creature's blazing eyes turn on you, and then oily shadows dripple, dripping from its teeth. No, please. Daddy, Daddy, what's happening to Mommy? What? Her words rise to a shrill scream as the creature suddenly turns, pouring itself into the back seat like a black oily mist. <laughs> I'm coming, baby. I'm coming. Hold on. Your heart thrashing in your chest. You unbuckle your seatbelt and scramble out of the minivan, flinging open the back door to find the monster already hunched over Angie's bloody, prone body. Her wide eyes, glossy and unseeing. Baby, no! Stumble back in horror, the monster pillows out of the car towards you, its red eyes slitting. <sighs> You won me. I'll kill you. Swaying on your feet, a crimson haze of rage descends over your eyes like a sheer curtain. You... you killed my wife. My baby. I'm going to end you. Bellowing furiously, you rush at the coiled wisp of smart shadow. Roaring like a thunderstorm, the monster streaks forward, slices its claws across your chest. <laughs> As a fiery agony blazes across your chest, the monster snatches you by the shoulders and tosses you bodily over the rip bridge railing. Tosses you bodily. No joke, I can't make this crap up. As the sunlit surface of the river rushes up to meet you, your last thought is of your wife's warm hands, your daughter's laughing eyes. Just before you hit the water, the memory dissipates. And you're haunted by Baby Shark. Do do do. <laughs> I've now ruined this memory. <laughs> okay, focus. It. You stumble reeling as the where else coalesce is around you. Fixing you okay? I'm fine, but Thomas, I know what happened to you. I understand now. Thomas's bleak gaze locks on yours, a fathomless, torturous grief. 
darkening his eyes. How could you possibly understand? Did a beast strip you of everything that made your life worth living? Well, in the past week, a certain blood wreath did put my close friend in the hospital, killed my father, and if you stop, maybe we can find the creature that hurt you. We can get you justice. He cut you off violently, smacking a bloody hand against the floor. What could this justice do me now, even if I wanted it from your soil hands? It's much too late for that, and it's too late for you. With a cry of pain and rage, he twists around and lunges for the disc. Drop it, you sick bastard! Drop it now! Thomas, don't! But just as Thomas's hand closes around the talisman, Nick bolts him in the, straight in the chest. Thomas lurches forward, only right into the empty elevator shaft. You and Nick rush forward just in time to see Thomas's body disappear into the darkness. A moment later, you hear a distant bone crunching thud. Is it. is he. The warehouse floor, the screams and sounds of battle die out, replaced by deafening rattle of skeletons collapsing into piles of inert bones. I think it's really over. You might be right, Rook. With a final backward glance into the gloom of the elevator, Shaft, you and Nick pound down the stairs to the warehouse floor. The rest of your companions stand in a loose group, looking credulously at the wreckage of the fallen skeletons. What happened up there? One minute they were dogging us, and the next boom, they just collapsed. A bit abrupt, really. I was just getting the swing of things. Thomas was controlling them with an amulet. He was about to summon the Blood Wraith, and, and Nick shot him. He fell into the elevator shaft, and must have been at least a 30-foot drop. Not feet, foot. Dear Pixelberry, proper English. Thinking of Thomas's loss, the tragic deaths of his wife and daughter, you feel a brief surge of sympathy for him. So he's... he's really gone? He's really gone. We're safe, and so is every other creature in the city. Except you still don't know what that black shadow thing that killed his whole family is. Everyone huddles around you, giddy with triumph, their faces suffused with glowing relief and joy. Go away. Yes, I want a hug. Come here. Maybe a kiss, too. Turn to Vera and reach for her. She steps into your arms, pressing her cheek against yours. I can't believe this is real. You won, Vixen. We won, Vera. Together. Ready to blow this joint, gang? I, for one, could stand to be somewhere livelier. Catherine groans, rolling her eyes affectionately. Dreadful, Ryder, but not entirely off base. We really should retrieve that amulet, but we'll need the right equipment to get down there. I can call my contact in the morning. Then it sounds like tonight is for celebration. He could be knocked out. He could be... You know what? Just... Alright. Whatever. Follow me, merry mortals. Tonight the shift will host the victorious. Laughing, you follow Garrus out of the warehouse. Battle wary, but buoyant with victory. Idiots. All of them. You all crowd together at the bar where Garrus has uncorked a bottle of sparkling wine. The finest fay vintage for my fellow warriors. Making out the good stuff tonight, huh, Garrus? You've had this bottle since I've known you. I've had it since before I left the realm, but it's been aging for over a century, and I thought it... I am I thought I might have save it as a keepsake. But what better keepsake than a memory of drinking it with my compatriots? Evil vanquished at our feet. As he pours, Garrus suddenly winces, spilling... Tiny drop of golden wine on the bar top. Are you alright? That wound looked bad. Garrus smiles pain, but he pats you reassuringly on the arm. Fear not, my fair half mortal. I've survived far worse scrapes than this. You were badass, buds. I caught the whole epic showdown through my Oculus mirror. Wish I could have been there. Really? Okay, no, that's a lie, but it was definitely fun to watch. Wonka jumps up on your lap, purring like a car engine, and kneading your lap with her little paws. It's sad, we've had this cat, what, three chapters? And... 
Hi, baby. Did you behave for Auntie Ivy? She was an angel. Well, aside from the part where she told me I'd, ne I'd never make it to as a stand-up comedian. You lift your frothing glasses, grinning exuberantly at each other. Cheers to... Victory. We fought like champions, and I'll never forget it. Who's we? You didn't do crap. Nick, be quiet. Well, some of us more than so than others. Watch it, Katie. I don't remember you taking down three of those walking castanets in two seconds flat. The wine slides deliciously down your throat. It's crisp, sweet, and wonderfully warming in your stomach. This might be the best wine I've ever had. It tastes perfect. It's the Valendial Terrier. Grapes grown in winter, warmed by dragon breath. Could I tempt you into another round? I'll pass on this one, thanks. I've got a quick phone call to make upstairs. I'll see you when you get ready to crash, Vixen. He squeezes your shoulder and heads towards the back of the bar, disappearing up the stairs. What about you, my newfound kin? Care to stay for another trip, Tipu? He grins at you, and then his gaze drifts lazily to Crom, who looks away bashfully. Ivy rolls her glowing eyes and leans towards you. We need you, Vixen. I'm woefully unequipped to get those two to stop mooning over each other and do something. Also, next round's on me if you tell me that incantation Thomas used to summon the skeletons. Stick around for some quality time with the graveyard crew and help deepen Garrus and Crom's relationship. They've been together, what, a century now? Come on now. I think it's time to crash. Got your arms above your head yawning. It's... I'm, I'm pretty wiped out. I think I'll head upstairs, too. Oh, bummer. Guess these star-crossed lovebirds will have to work it out on their own. I give it a couple more centuries. Or you can get up. Nick appears behind your shoulder. Oh, hey, that was quick. Nick gives you a long, unreadable look, rubbing a stubble chin. What's up? A wire transfer notification. The rest of the money for the bodyguard gig just landed in my account. Did it come with a name? Nope. You better factor still a cipher. No breadcrumbs to follow either. Money will shuttle through shell accounts. Wow. So the craziness is officially over? Looking that way. Catherine lays a light hand on your shoulder, smiling and enigmatically. Well, I, for one, have at least one more trick up my sleeve. A retreat, more like. Sounds promising. We've all been through the ringer these past few days. I thought it might be nice to relax properly, so I booked us all rooms at Fleur de Les. Holy cow, the floor? How'd you swing that on short notice? I have my ways. I thought we could take advantage of their decadent accommodations and the best spa in town. Come on, Katie, the floor. Don't you think that's overkill? Speak for yourself, man. I love a good massage. A second and swoon. That's an amazing thing to do for us, Catherine. Thank you. Okay, fine. Guess I'm outnumbered, so let's go be fancy. You say goodbye to Garrus, Crom, and Ivy, and head for the floor, Dillus. Mmm. I should wonder. You pile through the huge revolving doors in the glittering, luxuriant lobby. Wow, you weren't kidding about the swank factor. Cal, everything's so shiny. I've never seen so much gilding in one place. I'll say, I bet their spa is a full-fledged experience. Their massages are legendary, but just wait until you see the rooms. Oh, I don't plan to wait long. I'm heading straight upstairs to give that room a good breaking in. It catches your eyes, catch yours, mouth quirking into a crooked half-smile. Then again, that'd uh, probably be a bit more fun with company. What's your pleasure, Vixen? Want to share some intimate one-on-one -on -one time with someone special? This is your chance to take things to the next level. Uh huh. Hmm. I like the undergarments. Hello, self. But a little musclier in the abs. Pink. She's wearing blue. I'm just saying. Get a massage. I've never had one. Same here. I've got knots the size of boulders all along my spine. 
I got a date with some hot stones and essential oils. At the spa, you're led to a private room where you spend a glorious hour and a half enjoying a luxurious candlelit massage. Afterward, you make your way up to your room. Wow, this is beyond spectacular. Gotta remember to thank Catherine properly after I sleep forever. You fling the window open and burrow into the luxuriant bed, sighing with pleasure. I can't believe everything's really gonna be okay. <laughs> Even I'm laughing at this. The night breeze wafting over you, you listen to the unlikely melody of the city bird song outside your window, feeling sheltered and apart from all the evils of the world. So, <clears throat> this is where I go, I told you so. Miles away at the bottom of an elevator shaft, Thomas's body lies broken and twisted on the concrete. A cracked metal disc clutched in one bloody hand. Blood seeps into the cracks of the pin, hissing and popping like oil on a hot pan. The disc begins to glow a deep, blazing red. Thomas's body jerks and twists. Slowly he rises. He's become a zombie. An undead abomination rises to turn your celebration into a slaughter. Will you survive this nightmare? Keep playing to find out. Nah, you did it wrong. You did it wrong. You did it wrong. No, 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 no. You did it wrong. No, 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 no. Okay. One, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And down the description below, links to uh, social media. All right. Links to social media, Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. And uh, yeah, without further ado, hope to catch you all in the next video. Sorry, this is a day late. Moving on, let's uh, go through a rant. It's a small rant, but they're at the end, you know, right when it was you faded asleep and then it was fades to the other side of town. OK, so where the disc was in his hand right there, you could have cut it off. You could have left it wondering, did he make a deal? Did he summon the blood wraith for next chapter? Did he did, did what what's going on? Why? And then it could have just faded to black. You could have actually removed all reading. And you could have just had a bloodied hand holding a half-broken disc glowing red. And that's good you all, that's the artistry in me. That's also the story writer in me. That's literally all you had to do. It would have left people going, oh crap, did he get the blood wraith back? And then next week, oh look, he's turned into an abomination and he just starts wrecking bloody havoc. That's the way I would have done this. That's the way I would have done this. You gotta leave people a little suspended in, in like, oh boy, what will happen? Who, what, when, where, and why? The whole nine yards. You've got to at least leave people with a little something. That's just me. So, yeah. Um, like I said, thank you all for watching. So, let's just go right over here. Um, today I've got to finish up... Uh, oh, God. Today's already Friday. Oh, I forgot. i got to watch this for a diamond. Um, so, we've got... Thursday's video platinum and then we've got the new bachelorette which I'm not looking forward to because it's bachelorette it's just no I'm done anyway moving on thanks for watching peace out